All right, this is going to be a little fun one. We're going to have some fun. We have some fun chopping off some heads. Ah! Okay, so this video is actually about making these little custom Pez heads. So you can make, well, custom Pez heads. You, you could actually just print the, the ones that I've already done. I will upload them, of course, with the permission of the original. These are just edits. But uh, the whole point of the video is to actually make your own, make custom ones. And I'm going to show you in this video how to do it in Fusion 360. Uh, import a model, use my, I have a designed knockout that you need. You'll basically take the design, cut the head off, put the little knockout in, cut the knockout out of the head, and then print it. I will also do another video. Uh, it's very long, ended up being rather long, so I'll do another video on how to do it in Tinkercad. You can do it in either program. If someone's really proficient in Mesh Mixer or other applications that they think they can pull it off, they're more than welcome to, uh, you know, take my little model and use it for a negative cutout in another application if they'd like to make a video. Uh, but this, uh, I'm most efficient in Fusion 360 and in Tinkercad. This is how you go about it. This is how you go about stripping the head down and taking the original Pez head off and putting your custom head on and, you know, designing and printing your own custom Pez head. So you can have Pez. You could have a Joel telling Pez head. So the first thing we actually need to do is get Joel in the Fusion. So, you have to go to Insert, Insert Mesh. And then you select your Mini Joel. And there he is. Let's stand him up. Because we don't need Joel laying down while we operate on him. He can be standing up while we cut his head off. <laughs> so there he is. There's Mini Joel. Now, we need to edit Mini Joel. But the first thing we got to do... For some reason, you can't record the history in the timeline while working with Mesh and really get anything done. So the first thing we need to do is go down here and do not capture design history. Okay. Now, we can go up and as you can see this menu all changed. And I can go into Mesh. And I can try and convert b rep to mesh it should be mesh to b rep but that's all right but we're not even going to try and do that yet the first thing we need to do is cut the body off now i normally remesh it but i want to actually cut the bottom off so when i remesh it i have less polygons that i have to remesh if that makes sense right now i have a bunch of polygons and if i try and make this a solid mesh to b rep if i try and convert this now it's not going to let me. It's going to tell me there's too many. So if I go back into the mesh and I do erase and fill, I'm going to select, let's make sure we're nice and straight. I'm going to select his lower body. I don't really like that one. I'm going to go lower. That selects his lower body. See, it kind of made them into a weevil wobble, but they don't fall down. But I'm going to change it a little. And I'm going to change it to minimal. And that gives me a nice flat face on the bottom. And that got rid of all of those polygons down below. Or most of them. And hit OK. Now, even if I still go back, I think... It'll still scream and say there's too many polygons. Yep, too many. 57,268. Now, I believe 10,000 is the maximum that will allow you to 
remesh. So, let's reduce them. And we'll just select all of Mini Joel. And what we want to do is go to face count. And right now I have 14,000. I Like I said, I believe 10,000 is the maximum. So I'm going to put it at 10,000. I'm going to hit the preview. Preserve boundaries. And it's going to look pretty crappy. But it's not as bad as you think. It kind of does this stuff weird here. But when I actually convert it, it kind of straightens a lot of it out. See how it's kind of right around here? It's all kind of rounded. But when I do actually, and I believe we can actually do it now, mesh to B rep, it will actually let me do it. And it actually straightens those out. I don't know why it does that. It's, Fusion just doesn't isn't great with STLs. But see, it cleaned it all up. And now we have a workable model. The first thing I like to do is fix all this stuff where I cut it out. So I'm actually going to take a field, a construction plane, drop it down just below. Okay. I'm going to select that, go to solid, and start modeling here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a big old circle, bigger than the whole, whoop, bigger than the whole model. I'm going to select it. Then I'm going to go to solid. And what this is going to do is get rid of all of those polygons all weird on the bottom. I just make it a one single flat solid bottom. And that makes our next step much cleaner. So it's a single step bottom now. It's one solid piece. That's going to make the cutout easier. So the next thing we're going to do is import the Pez base. Uh, this is a negative insert in the current design. It's going to tell me I need to save this. Save. Joel head. Make sure this is like the third time I've been doing this. <laughs> Oops. Insert in current design. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is get this somewhat lined up. Another. Let's line it up. Now this lip, if you see this lip here, let me bring this down so you can actually see it. See the lip right here? That's the bottom of the Pez head or the top of the Pez dispenser outer casing. So that all has to line up approximately with the bottom of where you plan on having your Pez head. And the other thing you have to worry about is if you look, it's hard to see. Let's see if I can get rid of that. If you look, you can see all of this. This needs to be inside the body. It's hard. It, it's kind of hard to describe until you get used to doing it. But you'll see in a second. So you make sure it's all lined up with where you want it. And I think that's all right. Go OK. Now, very simply, you take that one. Let's rename this to Joel Head. So we know what's going on. And we're going to take Joel Head and we're going to join it with the Pez body. Knockout. What I actually want to do though is cut and hit OK. Now, if we make the Pez disappear, you can see it cut it all right out. Boom, we're basically done. Now, the only thing I do want to do is see how this is a little, I cut a little deeper. It's OK, but I do want to get rid of these lips. See how they're a little higher? 
So, we can actually bring back our sketch that we started with, select that same circle, extrude it, and just tell it to extrude to that face. See how it highlights? If I click on that now, it'll extrude it to there, it'll cut it, and make it all a simple flat surface. And there we go. We now have a Joel Pez head already to print. All right, I don't really have the best setup for filming this, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, we are going to take a Pez and put a Joel or Joe. Joel, Joel or Joe head on it or whatever head you want and that's the whole point of this video is not only am I showing you how you can just print one and stick it on there but you can make your own the first thing we need to do is well get the Pez out of the package and I like to cut them so I can reseal them and send them to people and make them all fancy so if you cut it in the back you can just put a piece of clear tape on the bag Reseal it and it looks like it was never opened unless they really investigate. And of course you get your candy and your bag. Alright, so I've discovered there's a few of these that are easier than others. This is not one of the easiest, but it is cute. And it's got the yellow. Um, these are cheap. You can buy them. They're like, you can buy them direct for like a dollar and a quarter, I think. Uh, I actually go on their discontinued on their website or they're on sale. And you can save a couple, you know, 50 cents, buy a few of them. Anyway, there's two ways to go about this. One is you can just open it up, slide this under here, and try and flex it open. Now, there's little tabs on this that you do not want to cut. So that's why I kind of prefer not to do that. Because, one, if you slide this in there too far, if you slide this in there too far, you might actually cut that little tab off. Two, if you pry against it, this is stronger than the nylon body that holds the candies and has the pin and spring and everything in it. And if you damage it, you're out of luck. So what I like to do, what I like to do is find one of the ones that's like hollowish inside. Or this one, I mean they're all hollow inside, but if you look this one's got the big round and it's all solid in here. This is actually much heavier than this one. Alright, so poor little minion's gonna get pulled apart. But if it's nice and thin walled here, which this minion one is, you can actually just grab it with a pair of pliers and use two pair of pliers and just break it away. And that way, you don't have to damage it. And then you can just slide it out. And I think I'm there. So if you grab it there, and you grab it here, and you can just flex it apart, and the carriage bend pops out. Now, if you just take this and you jam it up in here, your little pins on these leaves get damaged. I've done it a few times, it still works, it's just not as secure on the new head. So let's clean up this mess. And here's our new heads. We have a Joel head and a Joe head. Joe's got a chrome dome. Well, gold dome? Gold dome? <laughs> Uh, Joel is printed obviously in Joel's High Five Blue by Protopasta and Joe is printed in I think it's TTYT3D um, some kind of coffee I'll have to list it I can't remember the exact color but it's nice stuff it's one of the Amazon cheapo metallics but it's really nice filament anyway like I said during the slicing section you want to make sure you slice it 
and if you do it in eccentric concentric this will pull off really easy you have to be a little careful I've learned if you squeeze it this way and just kind of slowly work it off you won't break the little if you get too aggressive you'll break the little controller tabs off so you have to be kind of careful and avoid that with all costs and you just kind of work it off and I broke that one let's do this one I had a feeling that stuff wasn't going to work very well because all those um, silks end up being weak on the layers let's try it with this one See, that just popped right off the high five blue High five blue for the win! Woohoo! Sorry, Joe, I'll uh, reprint you. So, anyways, the easy part is you can see inside here. I don't know if you can see inside there. If you look inside there, there's a little spring tab that operates the spring, and the longer one operates and pushes the candy out. And then there's two sliders with the holes that are tightened. If you look and you just slide it on there and you need to align the tabs obviously there's two little hinge pins with the sliders and they're tapered and you just kind of push it in there real gentle like and kind of just ease it in until it snaps into place and there it is and that's it. Now there's a Joel Telling Pez dispenser. Da -da -da. Let's try it out. Let's put some Pez in there and see if it works. And look, it ejects a candy. Mmm, Pez.